the history of Jung and archetypes is very interesting. Jung kind of took this idea of there's these characters that keep appearing. You know, Jung is always about, it's never about what it's about. So it's always a symbol. Everything we're seeing is a symbol, a reflection of us. So it's like, if historically we always have these same characters, what are they reflecting about us? And so he came up with this idea of these archetypes as a way of understanding our internal landscape learning what's going on subconsciously for us you know and in a way that makes perfect sense if you look at early religions before the sort of big mono religions if you look at the ones when they had many different gods they were often around different elements so you'd have a god of love or you'd have a god of war Jung touches upon is what that's for is we we have to take something out of ourselves to be able to have a conversation with it to be able to look at it so by having a god of love if you went down and you worshipped at the altar of love or made a sacrifice or whatever you did it was a way of communing with that part of yourself it's a way of looking at that issue what's why, why am i having these issues around romance how do i look at this conflict that i'm having let me let me talk to the god of war about this to understand conflict and the role i'm going to playing it whether it's necessary and all this stuff it's a way of having dialogues with ourselves it's a way of understanding the bits of ourselves that we can't access through our cognitive conscious mind and so he kind of touched upon that when we talk about the archetypes now we really are talking about largely the lover warrior magician king and that largely came from robert moore and douglas gillette actually they were much more interested in kind of men's psychology they kind of refined the archetypes Jung had many more they they brought it down to four which is the lover warrior magician king so a lot of the time when people talk about Jung's archetypes they're actually talking about Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette's archetypes those basic four so they're much more involved in the sort of the mythological stories that we hear I'm sure you could put Jung's model over them without too much trouble and i believe gillette and more do but the archetypes that people talk about when they're talking about men's personal development or archetypal coaching or any of that sort of stuff they're actually talking about robert moore and gillette's model of the lover warrior magician king which is a fantastic 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 model to use i found it very helpful in my own life my own development as a way of being able to look at the different aspects of me because that's really what they're talking about the lover being the sort of the creative part of me that seeks connection with myself and others so it's my emotional life part of me that, that needs and seeks connection to others and then the warrior part which is the physical in many ways the part of me that takes action in the world the part of me that at times has to extend boundaries and a part of me that has to defend boundaries and the magician, which is the kind of the intellectual, it's also the intellectual and the healing part. So it's it's the thinking part, the planning part of me, the part of me that needs to take stock sometime and build plans. But it's also the part that can look back and heal. And that's about going back. What was the story I told? How can I give it a different meaning so that I can heal the stuff that's happened to me? And also the part that can look forward and model futures. And then the king, which is, I think, in some ways, the hardest archetype to grasp. It's the spiritual. It's the part of me that can take a higher view on things. It's a part of me that understands sacrifice. It's the part of me that if I take me out of the picture, what's the best thing to happen for everyone? So it's not what can happen here. It's what should happen here. And it's also the sort of permission part. It's okay knowing the magician, knowing what to do and the warrior wanting to, to take action and the lover to seek connection or to feel the emotions that come with all of those things. The archetypally, it's the part that can take a different view that says, okay, that's all what could happen. This is what's gonna happen because this is the right thing to happen for me and for those around me. You know, that's a really, really useful system to have. You can use that lens to look at problems. What does my lover want from it? And you're really asking, what's my emotional need here? What does my warrior want to do? What's the physical action that needs to take place? What's the boundary I need to draw? You know, what does my magician want? How do I need to plan this? What's the right way to approach this? And then what's my spiritual need around this? What's my king need to do? Where's the blessing? Where's the service? That's a really useful way to map our internal landscape. And it has been really useful for me. I think it has a, it has a branding issue. <laughs> For me, I think there's a branding issue because it's it's hard to move in men's personal development circles without wizards with hats and Excaliburs 
and all these different things. And I think that makes it very inaccessible for a lot of people. If you're not in a stage in your journey where you can accept more new age approaches to things, it puts it in that camp. You know, it sort of puts it in the hippie camp, really. And I think that makes it very inaccessible to people. Whereas if you're just looking at it as, well, what we're doing is we're looking at through the lens of emotional, physical, intellectual, spiritual, that's quite accessible to people. So I think in some ways, I think the archetypes have been a victim of their own success in the, how they're presented is often quite inaccurate and like you're about to knit some tofu when really it's a really really brilliantly sharp tool to use to find purpose meaning and you know joy in your own life